how do we study Earth's history? Until previous slide, I just introduced how climatic change before and uh, what was mass eviction and how volcanism influenced and uh, how we studied this. Basically, in Earth science, including disaster science, we have many, many fields like human geography, like geodynamics, like stratigraphy, like mineralogy, and environmental dynamics. Here, what we, I, I, I have engaged so far is biomarkers. This is a tool, a tool to study Earth's history, how climatic change, how bio change. Basically, here is a nice figure to explain how biomarker is produced. So there is a living animals on the surface, but once they died out, they become, basically they barrier, they, they are going to be in sedimentary rocks, basically subsurface, and uh, they are biological lipids, like cholesterol. Do you know cholesterol? Basically, cholesterol is a uh, one lipid which consists of our skin, not only ours, but also other animals. These biological cholesterols convert it into this cholestan in this geological record. What happens between here is that cholesterol has basically one hydroxy group here and one double bond here. And these two functional groups are unstable. So after this, after body barrier in the sediment blocks, this hydroxy group is released and this double bond are reducted. And what we found from cholesterol in geological record is cholestan, which has no hydroxy group and no double bond. So if we found this cholestan in sedimentary rocks, we can say, oh, there is a eukaryotic organism, including us, in that time of deposition of sedimentary rocks. And these repeats all gathers in sedimentary rock and we, they are diverse repeat molecules in sedimentary rocks right here. Yes, this is a conceptual model of phylogenic, phylogenic biomarker of trees. Basically, origin of life here and we are animals here, and cholesterol is here, and here is eukaryotic domains, here is a archaea domain, here is bacterial domains. And alongside of each branch, I add put specific molecule on each organism. So now we can see there are very specific molecules for each organism, like green sulfur bacteria has uniquely has this molecule and plants have uniquely have this molecule and archaea has uniquely has this molecule. So if we find this molecule from sedimentary records, then we can say, oh, here is archaea, here is a green sulfur bacteria and here is a human. And if we reveal static distribution, of these molecules, we can reconstruct how animals, how bacteria, how archaea evolved throughout the Earth's history. This is how biomarkers works. Yeah, we can say biomarker is molecular fossils. fossils. Very, very small. So, this is uh, at a glance how biomarker works. Basically, we can reconstruct bright impact using by this molecule. And we can find methane class rate direct from this molecule. And we also reconstruct, we can reconstruct oxygen concentration in the ocean from these molecules. 
and uh, temperature sanity can be reconstructed by these molecules, and PCO2 and basium can be reconstructed by these molecules. So organic molecular fossils are very useful to reconstruct paleo environment and paleo biota evolution. And this is a one very nice example how molecular fossils reconstruct biological evolution. So you see, this is a Cambrian explosion time. It is about 541 million years ago. They are like around 12 or 30, I forget, but many new taxon, including multicellular multi animals, appears since this Cambrian period. And before here, it's pre Cambrian. And here is how molecular fossils changes in their composition. And this red one is cholestan, which is main our lipids in our skin. And there are another similar steroid, cholestan, one is C28. Basically, cholestan, cholestan has 27 carbon, and similar one is C20 carbon molecule, Calls ergostan a C29 molecule, which is called stigmastan. So let's see how this evolutes changes in composition. Basically, before this gray layer, we only had C27 cholesterol molecule. Basically, we cannot find any other C28, C29. Steroids from sedimentary records. That means animals didn't have ability to, to produce C28 and C29 molecules before this gray layer. And animal can only produce C27. But after this gray layer, what we see is appearance of C28 ergostan and C29 stigma stan molecules. Obviously, there are biological evolution between these gray layers, yeah, before and after these gray layers. And these gray layers are events of snowball earth. So I have said, I said, snowball earth is nothing to do us because our future is global warming, but Snowball as event in the past very much contribute to evolution of animals, repeat conditions. And what is the significance to appear these new molecules are that their function of each molecule are different in our skin, basically in animals. That means to adapt new environment animals create ability to produce these two molecules after this snowball earth event. So this is an example how biomarkers, basically molecular fossils, reveal as history. And uh, yeah, very much big attention. This was published in Nature articles. And as we see many events in the past, we have 40 billion years life evolution history. And to use molecular forces, we can track on how life evolved. And many of the targets for current researchers are these mass extinction events in the past. But I am now very much interested in Milankovitch cycle using by biomarks. And this is my next 